All right. Well, welcome everyone to our, our first highly anticipated AMA, Ask Me Anything series with the Culture First community. Um, this has been, this is going to be a great opportunity for us to like come together, dive into some really cool topics that matter most to us. Um, my name is Jesse Jacob. I am a senior community engagement manager here at Culture Amp. I run our, uh, Culture First Global Chapters. We have now over a hundred global chapters with over 10,000 community members. So really excited. We're celebrating that milestone. It just happened last month. Um, my colleague, Demario Bell, also senior community manager at Culture Amp will be joining us here in a little bit, uh, but really excited to have you all uh, with us today. So we're going to embark on this journey of knowledge sharing and collaboration, um, and just super grateful for you all being here a part of this like first AMA series where we're, this is the pioneer group team. Uh, so it is definitely your engagement, your enthusiasm, and your passion for creating um, positive workplace cultures that is making all of this possible. Um, so today we're launching this series this AMA series with none other than the Elizabeth Boyd, the amazing Elizabeth Boyd. She's a renowned expert in talent development and learning. She brings a wealth of experience and insights that are undoubtedly going to inspire us and empower all of us to keep co-creating a better world of work. Um, so um, please bring all of your thought-provoking questions, um, be willing to share some experience and just get ready to engage in a meaningful discussion. We're just going to geek out here. So um, I'm going to share a couple slides here. If this is your first culture first gathering, um, I'm going to walk through like, who is it you say you are? Uh, like I said, I'm I'm Jesse running our senior our IRL communities and Demario runs our digital communities. So if you're in our People Geek Slack community, you see Demario a lot. Um, so who are we? We're a group of people around the world who share belief that a better world of work is possible. And by golly, we're willing to do something about it. <laughs> um, so we have these five core principles that hold all of us together in this community. And those five core principles are fostering belonging acceptance. So how we really think about this is like, we want to create an environment where folks feel like they can come seen, heard, valued, and appreciated for just being themselves and showing up. The second value or principle is being willing to reflect and grow. So if we're on this mission to transform the future of work and our workplaces, that starts with us being the change we want to see in the world. So turning the mirror around and saying, how am I showing up? What can I do? How can I make this a better working dynamic? The third core principle is having the courage to be vulnerable. This idea of like, we're constantly wearing, for the Brene Brown fans in the room, uh, we're constantly wearing these masks all the time. We have this armor on, of like I have this title and I work at this company. And really this idea of like, how do we take off some of those layers of that armor? And underneath all of it, it's just like, we're human beings. <laughs> and so if I am gonna take off some of my armor, then other people feel like they have permission to take off some of their armor too. Um, so this idea of if we are, we can create more trust and psychological safety with one another as we're on this journey to create a better world of work. The fourth core principle is putting learning into action. We don't want this to just be another place where you consume information. It's in one ear and out the other. We wanted this to be an environment where folks can come and learn together and put have discussions about what can you do? What's one thing you can commit to taking action on? And then the last four principles, connection inside, business outside, just a fun way of saying that in the context of this gathering, we're here to connect as human beings first. And if that leads to doing business on the outside, that's cool, but that's not the primary purpose of the gathering. So it's not just another networking event and a place to like push business cards and folks aren't going to get pitched culture ramp at this gathering. It's just a place for us to come and learn and share ideas and best practices with one another. Um, all right. Does everyone feel like they can resonate with these principles today? I feel like you're in the great. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to lead us in just like a brief grounding for a moment. Um, I know some of us, it's like, we're just getting our morning started. Some folks are like, you know, lunchtime, but I was hoping to just take a moment for us to center ourselves, arrive, we'll have a little check-in and then we'll hand it off to Elizabeth to get us started for this AMA series. So I'm gonna ask you all actually to turn off your camera for a brief moment. 
And we're just going to do a couple rounds of breath. So feel free to, you know, soft gaze. You can shut your eyes down, whatever is most comfortable for you. And we're just going to do three rounds of breath. So we're going to do three seconds in, three seconds out. Um, and we're just going to do that three times. So when you're ready, maybe just noticing yourself in your chair, make yourself just 10% more comfortable. Maybe you're even standing, whatever. Just make yourself comfortable. And we're going to go ahead and begin our three seconds in, three seconds out, three times. And begin. And then just taking a moment to notice how your energy level, how are you doing today? If you were to give yourself a color today of red, yellow, or green, what would it be? Green's like, I have loads of energy. Let's do this. Yellow's like, I'm okay. And red's like, woof, I could be better, but I made it here and that's a win. So just noticing in your body, how are you feeling today? There's no right or wrong answer for this. Just honoring whatever comes up for you. And then we all have this ongoing to-do list, it seems. But what's something that you're going to consciously set aside for the next hour for us to be here together? So kind of picture that thing in your mind's eye. Maybe it's a conversation you need to have. Maybe it's an email or a text message you need to respond to. Picture that thing that's holding your attention back in your mind's eye and then pick it up and set it aside on a imaginary shelf. I want you to take one more big deep breath in through your belly with a big hush or a sigh out. So ready, go ahead and bring in your in breath. And exhale. And when you're ready, come on back with your camera on. All right. Let's do a little, uh, let's do a little chat bomb. So let's everyone write their color into the chat. Don't press enter yet. Okay. So type in, are you red, yellow, or green? Or maybe you got creative and you're Grello today. Uh, <laughs> type in your color into the chat and uh, give me a thumbs up when you have it, but don't press enter yet. You're good. All good. All good. No worries. All right. Ready on three. We're going to press enter one, two, three, enter. Oh yeah. Thank you for the folks who are uh, honest about being red today. I appreciate that. A lot of yellows. Chartreuse. Oh, you fancy. <laughs> so good. All right. Well, thank you all for checking in. Let's hand it off to Elizabeth Boyd. I'm so excited to get into just the content of today to learn from her around unlocking the power of non-traditional roles and reshaping the future of work. Um, Elizabeth's a fractional director of talent and development and learning at talentlab.live. So thank you for joining us today, Elizabeth. Over to you, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. I am so happy to be here. This is super exciting. And I'm just glad to spend an hour with everyone here. And I'm so happy to see some friends on here too. So it's good to see everyone. Um, all right, I'm going to share my screen. And then we will kick it off. And I have to go back to the beginning of my, <laughs> my presentation. Sorry. All right, so um, we titled this Unlock the Power of Non-Traditional Roles for Shaping the Future of Work. And since I created this deck, I've come across some rather interesting statistics that I want to share with you. Um, but today we're going to go over sort of my experience as a fractional. I was primarily consulting and then transitioned to a fractional early last year, and it's been amazing 
which has been my journey. Um, so I'll share some of that with you. We're going to talk about um, what the definitions are of these non-traditional roles that are out there in the world of work right now. Um, the future of work, what to expect. I'll share some statistics with you um, and why these roles are so attractive to organizations and that's growing in attraction. Um, and then we're going to open it up for some questions and answers. And I might not have all of the answers, but we can work together as a group and I identify answers and um, let me present so sorry all right so I thought this statistic was really interesting by 2027 it's predicted that 51 percent of the U.S. workforce will be compromised of contingent workers and that's from a Robert Half study um, and there's a lot of different studies out there for the international world of contingency, um, but some of our European partners actually have employment contracts and they're doing things a little bit differently already. Um, so I, I share as much of that international angle as possible. Some of it's US based because it is growing here finally. Um, but I thought that was a really interesting statistic and one that we should be prepared for. So a little bit about me, as I mentioned, I transitioned to being a fractional as my primary offering. Um, I still do some consulting here and there, um, but in January of 2022, um, I operate on the people team typically um, as a partner in the business. And we'll go over a little bit about what fractional is versus consultant versus um, advisor versus interim in a little bit. But um, I lead usually the learning and development team. And what that is, is all learning and development activations, leadership development, onboarding and retention strategies, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I dabble in talent management, so performance cycle, career ladders, that type of thing. And then I'm also, in many cases, responsible for virtual and in real life uh, engagement based on the organization. Um, but I really enjoy my fractional work um, only because it's more connected and embedded in the business. Um, but now I'm going to go into a little bit about how we define these roles. And these are the roles that I have um, really looked into. So fractional consultant, interim advisory, gig and freelance. We'll talk about the definitions of those. Please feel free to ask any questions as we go. Um, but fractional is a skills and leadership based role. And this role is really critical to the business success and outcome. It's strategic and operational. And we have to consider the impact of our programming to the organization. Um, and that's sort of what separates fractional and consultant in a bigger way. So a consultant is a skills based role. This role is additive to the business and not embedded into the team. So we rely on partners openly sharing information relevant to the project to build out programming as consultants. Whereas with fractional, I have an email in the organization. I have access to the people and the resources that I need to create programming that's specific and unique to that population. So that's where we're starting. The next two are interim and advisor. So interim leaders focus on helping companies through periods of change or transformation. Um, it's usually an executive leadership role, and they're focused on getting the company to the next stage of growth or turnaround in a lot of cases. An advisor is an influencer. It's a strategic influencer who sets the direction um, in which the organization is heading and really inspires action to get to that, um, that end objective. Finally, we are, these are not new terms. We have gigs, um, gig, free, gig folks who um, are on-demand labor, coordinated usually through a platform. And then we have freelancers and they sell their skills generally directly to another professional on a contract basis. So those are really the definitions of the roles. So any questions or anything to add about any of those roles that I can answer or we can talk about now? Okay, definitions. Um, Cindy, I believe we are sending this deck out post call, so you will have access to these definitions for sure. We have a couple questions from Katie. Yes. 
Great. Yeah, I was just going to ask if you find these roles to be mutually exclusive or if you find that you do kind of a combination of this sometimes when you're working with clients. So I know that there are folks that have their hand in all of these, but as far as the scope of the project, they're really exclusive to that title. Um, Some people think that they're looking for a fractional, but they're really looking for a consultant because it's a definite time period to this role, Um, whereas fractional is sort of open-ended. So it's it's something that I find, especially since fractional is sort of a new concept, um, that you have to help people identify. Um, but it's definitely, they're very unique in terms of the offerings and what they do, even between like advisor and interim. An interim rolls up their sleeves and really gets into the business versus an advisor who creates the strategic plan and then pushes people to that plan. So they're very unique in terms of what they offer, but sometimes people aren't sure what the options are. So I spend a lot of time explaining to people you know, based on the scope of the project, what I think would be a good fit for them? That's a great question. Marna, did you have a question still? Thanks, that was kind of my question. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Um, so that was kind of my question, but um, to, to just reflect a little bit more, how does one represent oneself? Because what I find with a lot of projects is where I sit depends on the project. So I'm loath to say I'm available for fractional and that's what I am, or I'm, I'm a consultant and that's what I am. When it, um, when really it's like, well, what do you guys need right now? Um, it just feels wiggly. Can you speak to that? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So I still run into that. Um, I title myself as a fractional only because that's my preference. Will I do consulting? Absolutely. And that's after having that exploratory call with an organization. So usually um, in my case, people reach out to me and they're like, hey, we have a project. We don't have anyone in-house who can work on this. Um, Can we talk? And that's when I get on the call and help guide them to what they need. And in some cases, I'm I'm not an advisor or an interim leader. So in some cases, I'll have to direct them to somebody else. But usually based on the scope of project and how long it is and how much it's going to cost and what they're looking to achieve, what problem they're solving, um, they're pretty open to having conversations about either of those roles. But it is something that you have to talk talk about and then angle yourself for. Again, my preference is fractional, so I give myself that title so that people know when they book that exploratory call, kind of what they're getting into, if that helps. Yes, I think, Sinye, are you next? Yes, I appreciate you um, pronouncing my name. Um, so my question is, how do how does one create that fractional role for themselves in the company? Um, it sounds like most fractional roles are like self-owned businesses. And for me, that's not an option. Um, so how does one maybe introduce the idea of a fractional to a company, to their company and pitch themselves that role? Yeah, so um, usually um, when companies, I think one of the other things I like about fractional and not to sell it because all these all these uh, unique non-traditional roles are fantastic, um, but usually a company will come just based on my prior experience and word of mouth and say, you know, we don't have room for a full-time learning and development person. Um, are you able to help with that and kind of talk about the scope of the project? So I work with organizations. I don't work with smaller organizations. Um, smaller being kind of mom and pop, there's three employees. Um, they don't need someone like me. Generally, they'll bring in a consultant for the projects that they have. But I work with companies anywhere from uh, 45 employees right now to 17,000 employees. I'm doing fractional work and it's just based on need. Um, And that's usually how I find my target market is what's the scope? What are the what are the needs? What problems do we have to solve? And then talk to them about the different offerings. Does that make sense, Sydney? 
Um, it makes sense, but I don't know if that answers my question in a ways of like, it sounds like you're still coming from a, you are, yeah, your own independent business standpoint. Correct. All of these are non-employee businesses. Oh, okay. Hmm. Right. So this would be, um, I'm hired to do a project, be it any of these roles, but you're not truly an employee of the company. So um, you aren't paid generally in these. Um, and I have some information that I'll share on that, uh, which I'll move to in a second. But, um, you know, you're not entitled to benefits. You're not entitled to paid time off. Um, so you're not necessarily an employee, but you are a uh, somebody who joins the company in a specific role to help them get to the next level. Got you. I think it's my bad. I guess I misunderstand this even like incorrectly, but thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to keep going. So um, there's a couple of tools that I've gathered over the last several months um, to help kind of understand what these roles look like and the nuances of each. This is the first one that I created. Um, and I actually did it in tandem with um, somebody else who works in a fractional environment. But it just sort of outlines how people work in these different roles. Um, and obviously gig and freelance are very part-time project-based. Um, so I didn't include them. These are folks that can be a little bit longer or shorter, more embedded with the team, not but I just wanted to give people a clear idea of what sort of the, the differences were in these non-traditional roles. So as a um, fractional, you are generally embedded with the team, which means I have emails for all of my clients. So I'm like an employee, but not an employee. Um, I don't have a, a specific end date for my projects. I work on a 26 week minimum, um, but they've gone as long as a year and a half. Um, full-time, no, it's definitely a part-time role. Um, do you represent the company? Absolutely. And I, in some cases, lead a small internal team of learning and development specialists. Consultants, you're not embedded with the team. You need people to give you information to move forward with your project usually. There's usually an end date because it is project-based. Sometimes it's full-time. Um, that's different than my experience, but I do know consultants who do work full-time. Um, represents the company, generally no, and does not lead teams. They are their own person inside the organization. Um, interim is yes to all of these. Um, an advisor is different. It's definitely an external person who sports, supports strategy, but isn't necessarily connected with the business. So that's sort of the role overview. And then the second element that was has been pretty helpful for people who, who are not exactly sure what they need um, is looks like this. So I just identified the role, the definition of each role, gave them examples of what that looks like, um, a time frame for that project, and then how they're dealt with as far as payment goes and taxes. Um, so I've covered that for gig, freelance, consultant, advisory, and fractional, and then also an employee, just to kind of show the difference between these non-traditional roles versus a traditional role in an organization. Um, so you, uh, I actually posted this in the People Geeks Slack channel under the Consultant Services Hub, um, if you'd like a reference, and then obviously it'll be included in this, but um, Happy to have you look over this for a couple of seconds. And then if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, and I think the interesting thing is that we, all of these roles really do run on that 1099 form. Um, and then the equivalent of that in our non-US based organizations. Um, but they all have different sort of timeframes and, um, and needs and um, um, experience levels, which is really cool because that means in this market of these non-traditional roles, there's literally something for everyone. Um, and some of these you can also do if you want to kind of build your brand is keep a regular full-time permanent employee job. And then if your company allows for it, do it on the side, um, which is a great way to sort of build that customer base. And I think one of the things that I most enjoy about this is that um, 
uh, these communities for fractionals and consultants, they are so supportive and helpful. Um, and there's a lot of platforms out there like Upwork and Fiverr and uh, nameless others that um, support this type of work and help people build visibility. Um, companies go to um, organizations like Upwork and they post their needs and then you can respond to those. And um, it's just a really great supportive, welcoming community in all of these areas that can help you sort of understand and build your brand. So any questions on this before we move forward? We've got a few things in the chat here. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if they're appropriate for like right now or sure. if we want to pick them up in a little bit, but um, Demario is asking, how does search for, how, how do you search for fractional roles? Um, how, another question um, from Xavier is, how are you typically billing your clients day rate, hour late, project rate? And as a 1099, what's the best way to approach insurance? And things yeah. like that. Yeah, those are all great. So as far as um, sourcing the fractional roles, um, I really built my business starting as a consultant and then identifying that these projects needed to be longer. Um, there are some benefits for the organization to switch for, from consulting to fractional work in terms of you're there, you're on retainer, you're, um, it, they have you for, I always say 40 to 60 hours a month. Um, so, and it's less expensive. Um, so there are ways to position yourself. I am very open, if you know me, open source about stuff. So I actually have a consulting and fractional page um, where I say exactly what I charge per hour as a consultant and exactly what I charge per hour as a fractional and the minimums around that. Um, so that people can just go to that, see if it's something that will work for their budget and either hire me or look for someone else. Um, so uh, it really depends on what position you fall into, how you're going to get paid. Um, typically, like I mentioned, fractional is on retainer. So I get paid every single week the same amount from a company to do work, whether I work four hours or whether I work 10 that week. Um, it'll be the same amount as long as I hit my objectives, obviously. Um, and as far as uh, insurance goes, I foot that bill. So I know for myself that I can manage three fractional clients at one time. Um, and I make sure that inside of that, I'm able to support insurance for my family. So it's really something you have to look forward to. I also recommend for anyone who's interested in fractional, I actually carry liability insurance as a business on my, um, on my fractional services, just because you ha have access to equipment for companies and things like that, but it's very affordable. It's about $9 a month. Um, so things like that you want to look into and then make sure you're charging to cover those costs for yourself. I hope that got all three questions. Yeah, I think you're good. <laughs> awesome. So some statistics around these non-traditional roles that I thought were really interesting. Um, there were 64.6 million independent workers in 2022, which was up 26% over 2021. We knew the great resignation was a big deal. People were leaving companies that weren't allowing them to feel a sense of accomplishment or happiness or balance. Um, so there's this big market for these workers right now. Um, uh, the number of full-time independents working more than 15 hours per week soared 27% up from 15.3, uh, I'm sorry, to 21.6 million people up from 15.3 in 2019. So a huge amount of people are able to get more work done and things that are happier for them to do, more satisfying um, in these non-traditional roles, which is why they're growing by such leaps and bounds at this point. Um, four in 10 independents who provide services to businesses report finding work on talent platforms up in, 20, in 2022, which is up 15% from 2015. Um, so it's, it's getting bigger. And those are platforms, like I mentioned, like Upwork and Fiverr. There are some others as well, um, but really going through setting your um, what you're looking for in terms of industries or size of companies so that people can find you has become really important. 
Um, I just did that one, so sorry. And then the contingent labor imperative found that most corporations have increased their use of independent workers over the past few years. Um, and two thirds of them plan on increasing use of these folks even more in the next 18 months. Um, and you can see that in that statistic about 2027, where 51% of the workforce will be made up of those contingent workers. Um, so what does this mean for the future of work and why is this attractive to people? It's a less expensive talent model for organizations. So the Zipia just came out with some statistics around working. The average full-time permanent employee gets about four and a half hours of work done. Those are 2023 numbers every single day. Um, but they're sitting there, <laughs> whether they're at work or at home, um, not being super productive the rest of the day. We have four and a half hours where we can focus and we can get work done and be highly productive. Um, so this sort of eliminates that sort of sitting around having that visibility be the measure of productivity. Um, I don't have people going, you know, what were you doing yesterday afternoon? Um, I am allowed to manage as long as I can get to all of my accountabilities, manage my schedule on my own, which as a mom of two is really important to me, and which is why I like what I do. Um, the ability to bring in more executive talent. So fractional is almost all executive leaderships, previous executives and organizations. Um, and so they might need a CMO, but on a part-time basis or a CLO, Chief Learning Officer on a part-time basis. This allows people to adapt to the business in a quick and impactful way. Most of us who work in either consulting or fractional roles are really good at rapid onboarding into an organization. And that's a huge benefit for companies that they don't have this nine month process of onboarding somebody. We have to get in there, meet the stakeholders and get our stuff going pretty quickly. There's more efficient operations um, compared to non-traditional talent, or I'm sorry, as non-traditional talent, um, we work to complete tasks and projects instead of having to fill 40 hours. Um, and it's a decrease in HR issues. I think organizations, the statistic is like there's a 25% decrease in HR challenges with a contingent labor force, um, which means that I feel like I have more of a seat at the table in a non-traditional role than I do in a traditional role because there's so many layers. As a consultant or fractional, I'm invited there because they've made an intentional choice not to fill a role, but to hire a person to help get to the next level in the organization. Um, so it's just more interactivity and interest. Um, so there are very specific benefits for people, individuals, and organizations to lean into these non-traditional roles. And that's what I had. And everyone will get a copy of this deck so you can kind of go through. Um, if you have any questions after this call, I am here. <laughs> So I will pass it back to Jesse and DeMario. Um, I do have some information that I'll send out, some interesting articles and things like that, um, some templates on Canva that help with marketing um, that you all will have access to. And that being said, I will stop sharing. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Can we all come off mute and give Elizabeth like a oh. verbal like round of applause? Yes, yeah. thank you so much. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, I mean, let's let's open it up to the community. What kinds of questions do you all have? What kinds of or just comments, things that like really resonated for you? This is really just a chance to have a little open dialogue with everyone. Yeah, Katie. I'm a hand raiser. Sorry. I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <for it. laughs> cool. Well, so I, um, I'm actually really excited to hear from you. I just, st I'm starting to dip my toe into fractional work. I've got one client. I'm like 2023. I'm like, this is going to be my year. Um, I hope so. Who knows? Um, but anyway, I'm curious, um, what kind of gave you the push to jump into consulting and then fractional work? And how are you finding it versus your previous kind of in-house experience? Mainly, I'm, I'm curious about like what you're missing. What, what is it that you're finding you might miss about being in-house now? So my, my primary, when people ask me that, and that's a really good question, I miss the ability to, um, kind of build those deeper connections. That's the challenge. Therein lies the challenge. When you, you know what, maybe you're working four and a half hours a day, but 
once a week for an hour, you just get to connect and shoot the breeze with your colleagues, that, that's not really built in, in most cases to my day. Um, most cases, I'm just getting my stuff done or helping people kind of curate. Um, so that's what I do miss. And that's about the only thing, but it's a big one, that chance to, to connect. And I think as fraction, people get used to fractionals more, um, it will be easier to build those deeper connections, but I've never been able to do it as a consultant. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, I was just even thinking as you were sharing that, like so much we're in this like loneliness epidemic right now and how we're like, so even in our like traditional W2 roles, we're even feeling a lack of connection. And so like, as we transition into this model of more people having consultant work, fractional work, it's going to be even more disconnection unless we're like even more intentional about it and like what the effects of that could be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like what is fulfillment at work? You know? Yeah. Well, and I know my children are very tired of looking over my eyes. Ah. <laughs> I was like, look through this. See if you like it. And they're like, it's fine, mom. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. It's definitely, there's, there's, um, that's a, a hole to fill for sure. I have great relationships with the people that I work with, but it's just not as connected. Like we don't just shoot the breeze and that's tough sometimes. Yeah. Great question, Katie. Anyone else have something? Yeah, Susan. Okay, hi. And, oh, my new bestie. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool to see you in person. <laughs> we were at, we were at uh, Culture Con West. So good. Yeah, and I came home and broke my arm. That's why I'm not on video. Gosh. Uh, yeah. So, um, but but anyhow, I'm here in voice and <laughs> voice and text. Um, so I'm, I I was just thinking, Elizabeth and and Jesse, um, like what you're talking about and the question you know that comes up about how do you create those deeper relationships. Um, you know, even in a full-time role, my previous full-time role was, was learning and development manager, which meant I was the only learning and development person um, at a company with 1,500 people. But it was lonely um, because I didn't have my team. And, and, um, and that's where groups like this come in. I think that's where seeking out affiliative groups of people who are way enthused about the work that you do who are way enthused about the emerging ideas and the emerging processes. And I, you know, what I did last week was treat myself, even though I'm unemployed at the moment or, or available as a consultant, I'll put it that way, um, <laughs> at the moment, um, that I treated myself to go to that conference because I wanted to get enthused again. I wanted to feel less lonely. And I wanted to be around people who are executing emerging ideas. And so that's something that, you know, in various roles as, as a consultant or an offsite person working on a project, um, I make sure to do those things and participate with Association for Talent Development. And so that can be something to be very helpful to meet those affiliation needs and those social needs that we do have at work. That's an amazing call out. You're totally right. So good. So good. Thanks for sharing that, Susan. Also, I hope you're feeling better and getting some rest, but appreciate you being here nonetheless. Thank you. <laughs> oh, such a good point. What else? What are there? Anything anyone want to like yes and on to what Susan was sharing or like have another question for Elizabeth? Well, I can, I can yes and a bit more. I know, Jesse, you had mentioned this too, just as we're talking about the connectedness, even in full-time roles. Elizabeth, I don't know if you found this, but in my short few months that I've been doing the fractional work, I do find my relationship with work is changing in terms of like, it, and it's part of that, like I'm filling 40 hours versus I'm showing impact all the time. It's a little bit of, I'm doing the pieces that give me energy as opposed to what you know, someone expects HR to be, right? You get to focus a bit more. 
Um, and I'm, I'm honestly a bit happier now. So I'm like, I, I, I don't know how I could go back. Um, but I'm, I'm curious if anyone else is feeling this, if you're finding either remote work or the fractional work is kind of changing our relationships with what, what work is to a certain extent, unless we, I mean, it's a big, big, big question out there, but I, that's just kind of where I was going. I agree with you. I, I I love the consulting because I like the variety and I like meeting different people and having my hand in different things. And even though some of the, the concepts are really similar with what I do, like everybody needs leadership development. It's always the same eight things. Um, it's different audiences. And so I, before I was like, oh my gosh, if I have to do one more feedback session, I'm going to, my head's going to pop. Um, as opposed to like, oh, I get to do it with this small tech company and this large gaming company. And it's, it looks different every time. So there is more energy now behind it than when I was doing regular traditional work. I love that. That's a great point. I want to hear from some other folks. Maybe you don't have a question, but maybe something else that resonated with what Elizabeth shared. Would love to hear from anyone else too. I'm interested if anyone is seeing their organization shift mm. to more non-traditional role hiring. Has anyone seen that or experienced that? That statistic is pretty shocking in four years. 51% of the workforce are going to be outside folks, but is anyone seeing that trend yet? I'm not seeing it, but I'll be really brave and say um, I'm in more of a somewhat of a startup. We're like an eight-year-old startup, if you will, but I think what I'm sort of curious about is if you can be brave and share with your leadership. I mean, I can do it. I just, you know, I don't think it's a full-time need for us as in a startup industry. It's more of like being courageous and saying to them, Hey, I think I could do fractional work with you all. And here's where I could succeed in that role for you. And then just sort of leap off and go in a different direction. That's, I think that's great. Yeah, right. Say, I can do this and something else if you thought that you could. Yeah, because Katie, I think there is, a, you were onto something. It, it, you know, you have such work-life balance when you're able to do sort of multiple things. I mean, that holds true for everyone, right? But um, I, I love where this is going. I think, uh, Elizabeth, I thought about you this week as I went to just a payroll conference at my, um, at my, in my industry over here in San Diego. And the woman that I sat next to, she said, I really want to, um, leave my full-time role and do more fractional work. And I said, you know what? It's so upcoming right now. There's just a lot more flexibility for it. And I, I think there's a need for it as well. Well, and what you were saying, Amy, about like, okay, well, maybe your current employer becomes your first client, you know, and just like, <laughs> and then you can start to diversify from there. But even just the, the power of being able to, I think, yes, our organizations will take as much as they can get from us, right? Uh, but at the same time, like, how do we leave in a, in a way that you're not burning a bridge? You know, so it's like, okay, well, maybe I place myself as the interim thing while I help you hire for my replacement rather than being like, I'm out, see you later. I mean, sometimes it does get to that point and we need to set boundaries and be like, I'm out. Um, but maybe it is like, maybe you do care about those people and you're like, let me help you. And let's like transition out in a uh, culture first way, if you will. Um, I think that could be really cool to see more of that. And I think that's a great um that's a great thought. I think one of the things, one of the benefits I see counter to not being able to build those more deeper connect with those deeper connections with people in house is I had the ability last year to step away from a project that just absolutely didn't align with any of my personal and professional values versus, okay, I have to quit and I have to find and I have to do. I was able when the, the final straw broke the camel, camel's back say, this has been not great and I'll see you later. <laughs> and it's just nice to have that ability. It's nice. Anyone else want to add anything on to that or share anything else? I saw Katie um, had a great comment. She's seen a domino effect. Uh, once the company works with one fractional 
like a CFO, they're more, much more open to other fractional roles. And I think that that's really great. And I think that's why the community has been so helpful because I do something that somebody else can't do. And I certainly, I would bankrupt a company so fast if I was a CFO, <laughs> it would be the biggest mess. But there's, you know, chief marketing officers, chief financial officers, and we all sort of lean in on each other to, to say, okay, I'm working with a company and they desperately need this. Can I pass your name along? I love that. I got a question too, which is, um, what suggestions would you have Elizabeth for, um, the, like how to bring up this idea of a fractional leadership role that isn't your own role. So for example, if there's an important leadership role that needs to be filled and we don't want them to promote someone just because there's a hole that needs to be filled, like, how do you handle that? Um, and for instance, in this context, the person was promoted to an HR director that probably wasn't the ideal person for the role. Yeah, I, I would absolutely say, I, you know, I know somebody in the community, maybe you want to work, they work just as a fractional, um, but just based on my experience here, you can get that job done in 60 hours a month and you want to talk to them. I, I, I totally agree with you. I think the talent pool is more impactful when you have somebody who's extraordinary at that role. And, you know, instead of somebody who's mediocre, who's just sort of trying to keep their head above water, um, somebody who can step in and make an impact. And I think a big selling point is that um, even consultants do this. They, they get themselves on board so quickly. They know the stakeholders they have to connect with. They know the impact they have to have. And selling that benefit to companies as opposed to a nine-month onboarding plan um, is, pretty, is pretty attractive. Hmm. Yeah, it's expensive too. <laughs> so expensive. Well, and I, I would have to say, if I'm being totally honest, that's part of the benefit. When you say to people, yeah. instead of $160,000 a year, you have to pay me, you pay me 52, I work 10 hours a week, but I can get the same amount done. That's really attractive to people. And you don't have to pay me benefits and you don't have to pay me time off. That's super attractive to people, which is why this, this area is growing so much. Mm -hmm. I don't know, something that also was coming up for me as we're talking about this is just like how often we, <laughs> our egos get so involved and like, well, I can do the job and it's like, I can do everything. And then we want to have this like false sense of security in our role by like taking on more things when really you're probably not the best, probably not even your strength or your skill set to be able to even take that thing on. And that's kind of what I was hearing from this question, you know, is like, Sometimes you're like not the right fit for the person, but for the role. And that could be really hard to even admit that to yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, it was just something that was coming up for me. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. My, the, the project I dread, but I'm pretty good at it is uh, career ladders and career paths. I hate it. <laughs> but, and so I'm always like, uh, okay, I know somebody who can do that <laughs> versus I I'll do it, but I just have to have a lot of martinis in order to get through that project. <laughs> For real. Yeah, Elizabeth, that's um, the, your comments earlier about, about being able to focus on the stuff that, that energizes us and the stuff that we like doing in a non-traditional role is that's a, a really good selling point for that. Um, yeah, because, because, you know, in the full, in the, you know, FTR working at a company, we have to, we have to attend all those other meetings and all that other stuff that may be peripheral to what we're doing. And we may need to know a little about it, but do we have to sit in on the whole darn thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> it's, it's good to hear that you're, it's good to hear, hear you reaping the benefits of that. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, it helps us, helps us think, you know, think a little more out of the box about what's possible. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what I wanted to share? I don't, unfortunately, I don't remember the name of it and it's buried somewhere on my laptop. Um, I interviewed with a consulting firm and they hire people and have them sign up with the firm that handles all the, ten, all the um, 1099 stuff for people. Um, oh, wow. and, and like, we'll take money out of your, out of your 
um, your pay, so to speak, uh, you know, uh, from how that company pays you, and this company will manage all that for you. Yeah, and so I could look for that and share it with Jesse or share it somewhere later on because mm -hmm. I was really intrigued by that, um, and it helps you because people learn the hard way that you have to really build that in. And, um, and if you don't, then you're in trouble every quarter. Uh, so, uh, so I really appreciate hearing about that company and that that's someone you can, you just have that agreement. Basically, you don't see that money. It goes to them first. That's amazing. I hadn't heard of that. That's incredible. That would make life a lot easier come tax time. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, we have five minutes left. Um, I shared a link to uh, a feedback form. I would, we would, this is the first time we've ever done uh, an AMA series like this. This is a new chapter, a new concept. So you all are part of co-creating the future of this chapter together. Uh, so any feedback would be super helpful um, in terms of like, what would you like to see next? And um, would you like to attend one of these in the future? All kinds of things like that. Um, so would really appreciate the feedback form, but, um, I just put it in the chat. So, but I'll hand it over to Marna. I want to, uh, close it off and give you a space to share. I wanted to hear from you the session. So please. Thanks. Um, I, this. Oh, you went on mute, Marna. We lost you. We lost you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Here we go. Yep. Small boxes. Um. <laughs> so um this has been a fantastic session i'm very grateful i learned a lot and these questions might be a bigger conversation or shorter answers um how do you organize yourself in terms of an llc or sole proprietor or what does that like look like for you i understand you have liability insurance great idea um and also how do you so, so it sounds like people, companies contact you and they're like, we're having about what the deliverables or what the project is. And then you manage your time so that you're working steadily toward completing that project by agreed upon milestones, I imagine. And how do you manage your time to not do too much in a week? Mm. Yeah, so um, the first part of the question, yes, I set up a little company. It's called Talent Lab Live. I am the sole employee of Talent Lab. Um, I do carry my own insurance for, for liability stuff. Again, it's very inexpensive, at least the company that I work with is. Um, as far as managing my schedule, it's, it's pretty easy. I have, and I do this intentionally. I have um, companies in Europe that I work with. So do I have to get up at 3 a.m. and do a workshop occasionally? Absolutely. But I can get my other maybe U.S.-based companies done um, by 11 a.m. And then I have my day free. I am a, I'm a mom and I value that time with my kiddos and dropping them off at school and picking them up every day and having dinner ready at, you know, six o'clock. And um, that's why this schedule works for me. And like I said, some of the fractional work that I do, um, it's really, um, it's sort of predictable. So I can get a lot of stuff done and still hit my targets, my, my targets that I set for myself. And then some of it, they're like, oh my gosh, we need comms for um, our performance cycle. And I'm like, okay, I got it. And so I work an hour at night getting those comms ready. Um, but the rest of the schedule works really well for me. And I, I make sure that I balance my customers around the globe. So I have that time that I want for myself. So good. Super insightful. Thank you so much. Of course. All right. Can we give Elizabeth a little love or give us a little heart reaction, whatever? <laughs> Thank you so much. This was wonderful. Um, Thank you. Love to hear it. Like throw us a, well, let's do one more chat bomb checkout. How about that? You know how we did type our one word. So type in one word to describe how you're leaving and feeling checking out of today. It doesn't need to be your energy, but just one word. Don't press enter yet. Give me a thumbs up when you have it in the chat. It's okay, Amy. She's inspired. You can steal Amy's word. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up when you have it in the chat and we'll press enter. One, two, three, enter. You're good. Hopeful, encouraged, grateful, excited, inspired all. Thank you all so much. Um, Amy or Elizabeth, thank you so much for your time. This is like 
freaking awesome to learn from you. This is good things happen when the community comes together, as we like to say. So uh, stay tuned for more and cheers to co-creating a better world of work, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.